Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, like many of you, I'm, I trust, um, over the spring break did, uh, I read the audit report that the Legislative Audit Council uh, put forward and probably like you was rather shocked at some of the things that I read in that. Um, there are some clear governance issues that need to be addressed and I'll beg to differ with, with what um, some members have done here in this body to try to spin that report into saying how um, we primarily have a funding problem. We don't primarily have a funding problem, we primarily have a governance problem. So, you know, when DOT is um, rebuilding the wrong bridges and paving the wrong roads, it doesn't matter how much money we throw into that system, it's still not gonna get the right stuff done. The problem isn't that the money doesn't go far enough, the problem is that the money's going in the wrong places. So until we address governance, we haven't fixed any roads. 400 million or no 400 million. Gas tax or no gas tax. Mr. Samuel, I heard you say yesterday that if we concur with this bill that the, that the Senate has amended and sent back to us, that we're going to go out and say mission accomplished when in fact the mission was not accomplished. With that statement, I agree with you. Mission is not accomplished. But I also want to point out here that if we pass this amendment and we go out and say mission accomplished, the mission still is not accomplished. And it's not because we failed to raise the gas tax, it's because we failed to address governance. The problem with the DOT commission isn't who sits on it, it's the fact that anyone sits on it. It's the fact that the commission exists at all. That's the problem. Now, M Mr. Simrel, I'm sure you consider yourself a good negotiator, and I do believe you're a shrewd politician. Freshmen like myself have things we can learn from people like you. But here's the thing. If you're a good negotiator and it's actual reform that you're after, what that would look like is you would be abolishing the commission in this amendment. You would be adding as much sunshine as humanly possible to the DOT. You would even go so far perhaps as to sunset the infrastructure bank and abolish it. But you didn't do that. Rather than eliminate the commission, you strengthen the commission in this amendment. Rather than eliminate the infrastructure bank so that this body would be forced to debate and make decisions on funding for any large road projects in the future, out in the open as part of the budget process, you've actually strengthened the infrastructure banks and in the past have given them tens of millions more dollars each year under Act 92 so that they could turn around and borrow hundreds of millions of dollars that our children are going to have to repay, which a five-member board gets to spend, in some cases because you've been in the Senate longer than anyone else or your name comes first in the alphabet, not because you were put there by the people of South Carolina. With all due respect, that's what I call kicking the can down the road. Mr. Hill, let me know when you're ready for questions. I want to address the governor as well. I supported the governor in 2010, very enthusiastically, I might say. I've been extremely disappointed. I have. And I'll tell you why. So we haven't forgotten how, or I haven't forgotten how you stood in Anderson, I believe it's at the Civic Center, and addressed questions from me and a few others on this very issue. And you said that you supported abolishing the commission and that you opposed the gas tax increase. And then I haven't forgotten, and we haven't forgotten, how all through your reelection campaign, you, uh, or Everyone kept asking, what is the governor's roads plan? What is the governor's roads plan? And you were silent until after the election, until after your, re uh, after your re inauguration. And then you came out with a plan that raised the gas tax, contrary to what you had said. Governor Haley, in Anderson, that's what we call being a hypocrite.
Now, Governor, somehow you still have a bully pulpit here in South Carolina, and you're still not asking for real reform. You're still not demanding real reform. You haven't demanded that. You're willing to settle for this. You're willing to settle because that's the best you think you can get, but it's not. Now, folks, what I have seen happening here is it's all about power and money. And this is nothing new. Power and money is what seems to drive this chamber and the chamber on the other side. We saw that in the Department of Administration restructuring fight a few years ago. We don't want real accountability. We want, the constit we want the citizens of South Carolina to give as much money as we can squeeze out of them. And we don't want to give up one iota of power. And folks, that's wrong. Because DOT is an executive function of our government. I'm sure you all learned your civics courses. I would hope so. But we have three branches of government for a reason. We have an executive branch, we have a legislative branch, and we have a judicial branch. The legislative branch makes the laws. The executive branch enforces the laws. The judicial branch settles disputes when laws are broken. Now, you ask any high schooler where paving the roads falls into that, and they're going to say, executive. And they might say funding, if they're really sharp, falls under legislative, and that would be true. So that's why we need to eliminate these hybrid boards that insulate executive agencies, or what should be executive agencies, from executive accountability. As long as the Transportation Commission exists, the DOT is neither accountable to the executive branch nor to the people of South Carolina. People do not know who their DOT commissioners are, and they do not have the opportunity to vote for them, even if they did. And this amendment doesn't change that. So what have we done for the last year and a half? We've, and I use the term we loosely, but as a body, in general, what we have done is we have gone out and we have handled our constituents, and we have sold them a gas tax. We have tried. And guess what? They aren't buying it because they smell a rat. They know a rat when they see one. We explain to them how DOT doesn't have enough money, but we don't tell them why they don't have enough money. The reason why they don't have enough money is because they're spending it in the wrong places, and the audit shows that. The audit shows that there's not enough money after debt service and overhead, and folks, I was flabbed, my jaw dropped when a constituent of mine sat across from my table in my house and told me, that in the next county over, DOT employees went out to fix a bridge. It was a load-restricted bridge in Oconee County. And this bridge, the funding was there. It was, it was up to be replaced. And someone in DOT, I don't know who, and it doesn't matter who, but someone flagged the wrong bridge on the map. Well, you would think that would be a simple clerical error that would be caught when the people arrived on the job site. Guess what they did? They tore the wrong bridge down. They tore down a perfectly good bridge, and then, of course, you have to rebuild it now that it's torn down. Guess what kind of condition the low-restricted bridge is? Still low-restricted. That's what I'm talking about. Until we fix the governance issue, it doesn't matter how much money we put into DOT. We've got to fix this. Let's fix this. Let's do it right this year. Let's give it a year and let's see where we end up. Because I think you may be surprised just how far good governance can go within DOT. Thank you. Pending questions.